Okay, hello and welcome. Um, thank you for joining us for the student experience panel. Uh, my name is Joshua Delahan. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I am the Assistant Dean of Instruction and Student Affairs for Rouser College. Um, I'm gonna leave my video off because I'm experiencing a little bit of lag, it seems like, and I think it'll probably be best if you hear the panelists as opposed to uh, having me uh, be choppy in and out. So hopefully that fixes that problem. Uh, I'm gonna be the moderator for this session. Uh, we have some amazing students here, all of whom uh, serve as peer advising leaders and or uh, our health liaison for, uh, for uh, UHS. And um, we uh, are interested in hearing what they have to say today about what's it like being a student at Rouser College. Uh, so to start off, I'd like to recognize that UC Berkeley sits on the territory of Huchin, the ancestral and unceded land of the Chiquenyo speaking Ohlone people, the successors of the sovereign Verona band of Alameda County. This land was and continues to be of great importance to the Muwekma Ohlone tribe and other familial descendants of the Verona band. We recognize that every member of the Berkeley community has and continues to benefit from the use and occupation of this land since the institution's founding in 1868. And consistent with our values of community, inclusion, and diversity, we have a responsibility to acknowledge and make visible the university's relationship to Native peoples. As members of the Berkeley community, it is vitally important that we not only recognize the history of the land on which we stand, but also we recognize that the Muwekma Ohlone are alive and flourishing members of the Berkeley and broader Bay Area communities today. This statement was written by the Native American Student Development Office, and you can learn more about uh, uh, our efforts uh, on aloneland.berkeley.edu. To start off, I'd like to discuss the outline for today's information session uh, before introducing you to our panelists. Uh, as you may have noticed, you can see us, but we cannot see or hear you. Uh, if you have a question, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the Zoom screen, and, and I'll let you know um, um, that we've seen it uh, via, that, uh, via that mechanism. So after we've uh, gone over six initial questions with our panelists, uh, we'll begin going to those questions. Uh, you can also see that we'll be recording uh, our session today, so that'll get posted on our Cal Week website later on this week. So if you ever want to refer back, you can do that. Um, and lastly, at the end of the session, we'll post some contact information um, for general questions or in case you come up with something after your session that you'd like to follow up on. Okay, so now that we've gotten all of those logistics out of the way, let me once again welcome you to the Rouser College Student Experience Panel. Congratulations on your admissions to Cal. Uh, we know you've worked very hard to uh, get to this point and we're excited to welcome you. Uh, we hope that you find this, uh, this session helpful and that you'll join us in the fall. So today we have five amazing panelists who are excited to talk about their student experience at Rouser CNR. Um, so to start off with, if each panelist wouldn't mind sharing your name, your major, uh, what year you are, and maybe a fun fact about your yourself. And maybe Tina, can we start off with you? Sure, sounds good. Hi everyone, I'm Tina. I use the She series and the second year studying Molecular Environmental Bio, uh, Math and Psychology. And a fun fact about me, um, I enjoy horseback riding and I ride for the Cal Equestrian team. Uh, maybe Eileen, Eileen. Hi, um, I'm Eileen, uh, I use she, her. Um, I'm an environmental science major senior. Um, and I guess a fun fact about me, um, is that I've been a vegetarian since I was nine. Awesome. Uh, Isha. Hi guys, um, my name is Isha. I use the she, her series and I'm a third year. My major is nutritional science physio. Um, that's like the track and my minor is in disability studies. And a fun fact about me is I've lived in in like six different states across the U.S. since I've grown up. Wonderful. Uh, Gerard. Hi, everyone. My name is Gerard. I use he, him pronouns. I'm currently a second year double majoring in molecular environmental bio and nutritional sciences physio like Isha. 
Um, a fun fact about me is that I'm currently an RA in Unit 1, and I was born in the Philippines. Awesome. And last but certainly not least, Denise. Hey everyone, my name is Denise and I'm a third year. I use she, her pronouns and currently I'm an environmental economics and policy major, minoring in data science as well. Um, I guess a fun fact about me is before college, I moved around a lot. So I actually attended eight different schools before college. Wow, that's a lot of schools. Um, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you everyone for sharing your fun fact. Um, we're gonna start off with six initial questions. And um, while we're going through those questions, you are welcome to send us questions in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. And we will queue them up after we get through these six questions. So don't feel you need to wait till the very end. You can um, uh, enter them in as soon as they come to you. So to start off with, for our panelists, uh, we were wondering, what did you think Berkeley was gonna be like before you came here? And how did it compare to your experience? I can start off. Um, yeah, I think um, before coming to Berkeley, like Berkeley actually wasn't like one of my top choices. And I think part of it was because I thought it would be like a very cutthroat and competitive school. But like after coming here myself, I think I actually found that like people in my class, my classmates were very supportive and helping. And like, yeah, with those tough classes, I think I got a lot of help from peers or um, GSIs or professors. And it was actually like my experience so far has been really like enjoyable compared to what I thought it would be before coming here. Isha. Yeah, so I had something similar to also like what Denise said. Um, that was also my perception of Berkeley. And I went to high school in the Bay. So my high school is like also fairly competitive. So I was also very like worried about um, like how like cutthroat it could be here. But I also found like, like Denise, um, there's definitely, everyone's like really friendly. Like there's so many resources, especially at Rouser CNR. Um, I didn't expect it to be like super supportive and like um, everything, but it was like one of the best decisions that I made. And I'm like so excited for you guys to also come here and experience that. Yeah, building off of that, I honestly thought Berkeley was gonna be way too hard for me to handle. Um, I came from uh, being in high school where I didn't like have very good study habits. Um, and I didn't have to work like too hard to do successfully in my classes. Um, but I was hesitant at first to go in, into like an academically rigorous school like Cal. Um, and I also heard how competitive Berkeley was. So that kind of steered me away from Berkeley since I didn't want to go to college in like a quote toxic environment. But my whole point of view on Berkeley changed my first year when I started meeting other Berkeley students through GBO, which is like orientation. Um, and when you hear other Cal students um, like involvements back in high school, you realize how everyone is so involved and passionate in what they do. And I know some folks who made like their own nonprofit or they were like ASB president and everyone at Cal is just really focused on their studies and their future, even with like balancing their crazy hectic schedules. Um, and it, I just find that keeps me motivated and driven to do well too. So um, yeah. Yeah, um, so I'll go next. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania, so the other coast. Um, so I was pretty nervous coming um, 3,000 miles. I was like, I won't know anyone and maybe everyone will be from California. And I will say there are a lot of Californians, but you know, I like them now, so. <laughs> um, but no, there are lots of out-of-state kids and uh, international kids too. So you'll have people that um, you get in common with. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know what I was expecting coming to Berkeley beforehand because I had uh, never been to California before. Um, but then when I came, I was really excited to learn about people that had different backgrounds from me, different academic interests from me. And it really challenged me to be, I think, like the most well-rounded person I could be. Um, so yeah, I feel really lucky that I came in with almost no expectations um, and then was yeah, kind of blown out of the water.
Um, for me, like Isha, I came from a very competitive high school where every, it seemed like everyone just did stuff to get into college. And I was worried that Berkeley would be the same way. Um, but upon going to Berkeley, like, yeah, everyone is academically focused, like Gerard mentioned, but um, they're really passionate about it. And I think that was the key difference. Like you, everyone here wants to do well, but they also care and they also are passionate about what they do. Um, Great, thank you all for sharing your, uh, your initial experiences. Um, now I'd like to take us back in time and think about our lives before March, 2020, when we were all on campus and in person with each other. I guess Gerard, you're still there on campus, um, but when uh, more things were happening in person and hopefully that'll be the way it'll be in fall uh, 21. And how did you go about finding your community on campus? Uh, what was the best way to find maybe events um, maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, how you uh, initially found your housing um, or what housing you decided to go with um, and what was that experience like? Um, so I guess I'll go first. Um, yeah, um, I remember touring the dorms with my dad on Cal Day and I tour the units and I was like, okay, I guess I'll do it. And um, so I applied to unit two um, and I applied to get random roommates because I was very nervous. I was like, oh, I can't choose someone in the Facebook group because what if I like think that we're going to be best friends and then like we don't actually mesh and then it's going to be awkward for like four months. Um, and so, yeah, my other roommates, I was in a triple um, in unit two. Um, I was in Toll, which is the building. Um, they had selected each other. Um, so that's a bit of a surprise for me, but it actually turned out really well. Um, we're like three best friends and I still live with them. And then all of my friends from my GBO group, which is like orientation, um, are still my friends today. And I live with them now. Um, I lived with like five girls uh, for the past two years and then now just three. Um, but yeah, the other girls were all in my GBO group, which is really cool. Um, and then the best way to find events on campus is like, I know that there were lots of postings in the dorms um, and there are lots of activities at the dorms. So like, if you ever have the opportunity to get free food and hear a lecture, that's like two of my favorite things. So I think you should totally take um, every opportunity to do that. And there will be lots of opportunities like that. Yeah. Uh, so during my first year, which was last year, um, I lived also in unit two and a triple, um, but in the high rise buildings um, with two of my friends who I had already known, but I was able to make other long lasting friendships as well with other folks um, living in my same building through GBO. Um, GBO is really where you get to like meet so many different people, um, really make an effort if you do decide to come to Cal um, to, like reach out to others and make those long lasting friendships. Um, and also your dorm is where you'll make like memories that you'll cherish forever. Um, I remember do, having like late night study sessions and meeting people from my own hometown who I never knew or people whose hometown is like across the globe. And it's just a really diverse environment to be around. Um, yeah, and now I'm an RA in Unit 1, and the energy and the vibes are still the same, even with the pandemic. Um, and like Eileen said, there's tons of events for students to um, attend, get some free food, free stuff. Um, and additionally, there's also like ASUC, which hosts so many events. I don't know if any of y'all have ever heard of Superb, but they have like these silent discos in Sproul. They have like these concerts or comedy skits. It's really fun. Um, and a lot of social events um, that you can find on like Instagram or Facebook. Yeah, I can go next. Um, for me, I, um, I actually like, didn't know my roommates, but we like met on Facebook. So like we had picked each other and I lived in a unit three triple. Um, and I think uh, the location of unit three was pretty nice because like there was, we had a dining hall right downstairs. And um, I think unit three in general is a little bit more social. Um, and then 
yeah, much like um, others, um, also during GBO week, um, I met a lot of people and that's um, how I met a lot of friends, I would say. And um, yeah, after that, so sophomore year, um, because my roommates from freshman year, like we got along with each other pretty well. So like, I actually live with them plus an additional person on our floor, like for sophomore year, just like on the off campus apartment. And like currently I'm actually still in Berkeley living in an off campus apartment. Um, but I would definitely recommend like living in the dorms freshman year because that's where you get to meet a lot of people who take the same classes as you, who are the same major. Um, and that's also where you can find a lot of like, yeah, different, um, opportunities or events um, in the dorms. And I guess like once um, everything is back in person, like Sproul is also a great place to like find out about, about events or clubs. A lot of like clubs are flyering there. Like people will, will offer like free food or <laughs> advertise free food at their events or whatnot. So if you really want to look for events, that's also a great way um, to find out about more as well. I'll also put a plug in here that one of the great things that our advisors have put together is a virtual bulletin board. Um, so everything that we get will get posted onto that. So you don't necessarily have to come all the way to Mulford Hall to see that flyer you were looking for. Um, so um, and we're, that's a improvement that the pandemic brought us that I think we're going to continue uh, moving forward. Plus it saves trees. So we won't be printing out as many flyers. Um, my next question for you all is about research. Have any of you done research on campus? And if so, how did that go and how'd you go about finding it? Yeah, so for um, research, um, one of the things that I did was FUR and that's like sponsored projects for undergraduate students. So that's what it stands for. And it's browser CNR specific. So you get, uh, there's another program called URAP and then there's SPUR. So URAP is more for um, everybody at Berkeley and then SPUR is specific to browser CNR. So you as a CNR student can also apply to both, which is unique and different. Um, so I ended up applying one semester to SPUR for one of the projects and um, I ended up working on it and actually extending it for a whole year because I liked it a lot. and. What it was, was it was like a book um, and the researcher had like a connection through her family with some of Gregor Mendel's old works that were never published. So I was able to go through the biography and I personally don't like like hardcore like lab science research. So if you're not into that, there's like plenty of other opportunities too. So through that, I was able to um, like write the appendix for the books so that was exciting. Um, another note about research I would say is I feel like there's plenty of opportunities to get involved here. So like, don't hesitate to reach out, like even if you want to cold email professors. I know a lot of my friends have just gone through and just emailed like a lot of professors on like topics that they liked and then they were able to get research. So I would say don't be afraid to take advantage of any opportunities or like reach out. Um, I can go next. So I actually got my research position through cold emailing. Um, a lot of people say that it's really scary, but professors are super responsive. Um, and it's like, they all want to work with you. And so I love my research opportunity now. I I found it through my previous PI, but I know a lot of people go through like faculties and then email, like read their research papers and then email them about it, why you found it interesting, and then they'll probably get back to you. Um, let's see. Yeah, um, I went through URAP, which is kind of like SPUR, but it's for like the entire university. Um, and I applied to a bunch of different labs because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I applied to this one lab at the Museum of Vertebrate Zoology. Um, and it was like GIS and then also writing uh, species accounts about newly found amphibians. And I really loved it. I was like, okay, like I love amphibians. This is what I want to do. Um, and yeah, my supervisor was super sweet and hands on. And we got to go to trips to the Oakland Zoo and like understand how they're dealing with chytrid fungus in the wild. So it was really, really awesome. And then I later transitioned into working as a herpetology curator curatorial assistant at the museum. 
Um, and then through that, I did my senior thesis um, with my supervisor there. So yeah, it's been nothing but like supportive. And the biggest thing that I would recommend, I know someone said this in the chat is like, the earlier you apply, the better. Like the worst thing that can happen is you apply freshman year and you get rejected. You can apply the next semester. Um, so I would recommend applying like at earliest, like second semester freshman year, like your first semester, you're going to think that you can do a million things, but just like relax a little. There's going to be so much going on, like just do it like second semester. But even if you start like sophomore year, like I did, I feel like I have lots of research experience and it opened a lot of doors for me. I can go next. Um, I actually did both spur and year wrap, and um, I actually both started started both the summer after my freshman year. I feel like in general, because not a lot of people are here during the summer, summer research is actually easier to like start and then like continue on. Because um, yeah, for my year wrap one, I did in the summer and then continue to the fall, and then for spur, I just did for the summer. But I think. Um, I forget if I applied um, second semester freshman year, but um, either way, um, talking with my friends who applied during that semester, I feel like it was easier for me to get the positions because there was like, I feel like there was still a lot of opportunities in the summer, but just less people were applying. And um, for the URAP one, actually, I didn't apply the normal way. I was looking at like weekly like emails I get from my major advisor and she um, was talking about this opportunity um, you wrap in the summer and all I had to do for that was actually just reach out to the professor who was um yeah like doing the research and with that I guess like an informal way I like started the year wrap without the normal like application process um but yeah there's definitely a lot of research opportunities out there um if you guys are interested whether it be you wrap spur or like cold emailing or just looking out at like <clears throat> emails your major advisor sends you with like opportunities as well uh, in addition to like what everyone said regarding to like URAP and SPUR, there's also a unique um, way to get research, which I did through work study. Um, so I actually have a research assistant position through work study at Oakland Center for Environmental Health. Um, and it's super cool. I get to work with like schools and large purchasers um, and analyzing products with harmful like chemicals, like foodware and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's like another outlet that y'all, if you're eligible for um, work study, you can go through the work study portal and there's um, quite a few like research positions in there as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, you know, some of you have already touched upon uh, this, but maybe it's a point I think that we can't reiterate enough. Do you have any advice that you would offer students who are hesitant to talk to professors or graduate students? I guess the biggest advice that I would give is like, remember that they're people too, you know, like it can be really like daunting thinking about how impressive people are. For example, I saw Jennifer Doudna, who is like the woman that has the CRISPR-Cas9 patent um, in Philadelphia. Um, before I came to Cal and then she was my professor um, for bio and a and I was like a big fan girl and I was like oh my gosh like, I could never talk to her but you know she's a person like I'm sure she like you know she goes to the same drugstore as me it's like you know and every time that I talked to her she was really welcoming and nice and like I don't know you can gain a lot from just like talking to someone but also maybe you can get opportunities that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise um, also professors are very lonely during their office hours so like if you hop into their office hours, they'll be very excited to see you because they don't see that many people. Yeah, um, for me also, I went to a lot of office hours and that's how I got really close with my graduate or GSIs and professors. You just like, not a lot of people show up so you can just take advantage of that and talk to the professors one-on-one, -on -one, learn more about their research. A couple of my friends actually because they went to office hours, they got research opportunities. Um, they got to like read books with their professor. And for me, I, <laughs> I love my math professor um, for Math 55. And I actually invited her to a game night. And so we got close from that. Um, and I still keep in touch with my GSI as well. So it is definitely like they're super approachable. Um, just need to branch out and reach out.
have any of you struggled in a class? <laughs> um, I, I'm sure this is this is not uh, uncommon experience. But what would you? What advice would you offer someone who may be struggling in a class? Um, I think the first thing is just like recognize that you know you can't be perfect at everything. And if there was a subject that was really hard for you in high school, it will likely be hard for you again in college. Um, for example, I've never been very strong at math and I did have to take a full year of calculus and then also statistics. And you know, I just had to prepare myself and be humbled and uh, ask for help when I needed it. So that meant that I lived at the SLC, which is the Student Learning Center. Um, it's in the MLK, uh, area. It's like on Sproul, which is like the main entrance of campus. And they have drop-in tutoring, but they also have group tutoring. And then they also have adjunct classes um, where you can take them, I think, yeah, with math classes. And they just give you like uh, paperwork to do and homework. And if you don't do well on an exam, they'll be like, what happened? Like, how can we help you? And that was definitely essential in me doing well in those classes. And then also forming study groups. Like, if you're in a big lecture hall, I don't know how it's gonna be in the fall, but like back when I was a freshman and sophomore, I would just sit next to someone, try to talk to them. If it seemed like we were gonna vibe, I was like, we should study together. If not, just move on. There are hundreds of other people. If they don't work, there are other people. Um, but yeah, forming a study group was like essential. I would go to Moffat and study for hours. You just need people that'll like, you know, hold you accountable and work hard with you. Yeah, I definitely agree with um, a lot of what you said. Um, like I also, or coming in, I had no experience with like chem basically, no background. And then I jumped straight into Chem 1A, which is Gen Chem. Like when I came in, I didn't know that pre-chem was a thing. <laughs> and I think I definitely would have taken that if I knew it were a thing. But then yeah, jumping straight into Chem 1A, I was struggling from the like start. But then yeah, I had to go to, I went to the Student Learning Center a lot um, and with their tutoring um, was able to, yeah, learn a lot. And then also, yeah, forming study groups. Um, I think a lot of people in my dorm actually like took Chem 1A with me. So I was able to, yeah, just study in the study lounges with them and like, asked them for help, um, did homeworks with them, and yeah, study with them. And then I think another thing was um, like going to GSI and professor office hours, because a lot of students are there. You can hear like, even like, I think I was afraid to go in the beginning because I didn't even know what I didn't know. Like, I didn't know what questions I would ask um, if I did go to office hours, but actually going and hearing the questions other students asked, it really like helped me as well, because I also did not know like, answers to what they were asking so I think those would be some of my advices for um yeah people struggling in classes yeah um adding on to what everyone said I think that they offered like super Denise and Aileen's advice was really good um I also did struggle in some classes especially a lot of like the science classes so for me that was Ochem personally. And um, I would just say um, a key thing I feel like you can do like early on is when you join, you're going to meet so many people, um, hopefully in your dorm, hopefully in GBO. Um, and I feel like it's really easy to meet people because you guys will all be freshmen. I know I was like really scared about that coming in, but I feel like as freshmen, everyone's new. So everyone wants to meet people and like make friends. So I would say keep in touch with people and then you'll find out that you might have similar classes or so your their friends might have similar classes as you. So I feel like you can form those connections and then study together. Um, also the SLC, I like emphasize again, like that is super helpful. I like lived at the SLC. They have like drop-in hours um, like nearly all day, I think. So you can always just bring your work over and then there'll be a tutor. So you can also meet other students in your classes and as and like um, get advice on like questions that you don't know, so. Yeah, just echoing what everyone said, um, to take advantage of your resources at Cal because there's so many of them. Um, and also you at Cal, I learned one important thing, which is just like, self-care and that also ties into how you do academically 
um, which is super important. So also utilizing like any health resources available, like at the Tang Center, like we, there's like drop in office hours of any like um, psychologists on call and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, just taking care of yourself is also very important if you want to do successfully in any class as well. So. Sure, that's a great segue potentially. Would you like to share with us or share with our audience what uh, your role is at Rouser College um, uh, for the semester? Yeah, so um, I'm currently the health worker for um, Rouser College and I'll actually be the health worker next year as well. So hopefully you'll be seeing a lot of me on the virtual bulletin board and the newsletters. But um, as a health worker, I'm the health liaison for any Rosser College students in our department. And um, I link them with the necessary like health resources at the Tang Center. So I have like drop-in office hours, um, similar to the PALS. If they have, if you have any questions about any of the resources that Tang has to offer. Um, and I also make these like weekly health tips that are posted on the virtual bulletin board. Um, but yeah, that's my role as a health worker for CNR. We have been super excited to have Gerard join our team this semester. And I did not know you were returning next year. That's exciting. OK, yay. Um, so uh, what our last question for the panelists before we dive into our questions from our attendees is, uh, do you have any career paths currently uh, set up, uh, set for yourself? Um, or um, do you, are you aware of any other careers maybe that are different from the one that you're pursuing uh, that you hear uh, students are pursuing within your major. So maybe you may want to remind people also of what your major was and, and where you've heard people are going after they graduate or maybe where they want to go. Yeah, so I can go. Um, I am a molecular environmental bio major. So a lot of people in my major either go pre-vet, pre-health, pre-med. Um, I personally am not <laughs> pre-med. Um, I actually want to go to grad school to get a PhD program in like computational bio or molecular bio. So that's where my paths are. Um, and I'm an environmental econ and policy major, and I know a lot of people with my major, they can either go to just like regular jobs that regular econ major students go into, like whether that be like economic consulting, um, finance analysts, like those kind of things, or they, a lot of people um, can choose to go to like government jobs, like policy position, energy positions, um, et cetera. I know a lot of people also, um, may choose to go to grad school or to do research. And a lot of people also are like pre-law, I think, um, in my major. But I, um, to like Tina, um, like I'm not doing any of those that I know a lot of people with my major do. I think for me, because I'm also minoring in data science, I think I wanna go more into like data analyzing type of um, roles. So I'm a nutritional science on physiology and metabolism major. So physiology and metabolism is my track within nutritional science. So I feel like for this major, there's three tracks. So there's toxicology, physio, and then there's also dietetics. So dietetics is the track most people use to become a registered dietitian. So that one's more specific. Um, it's more set on the classes you take. Um, one good thing about my major I really liked was that you have a lot of flexibility um, to pursue whatever you want to pursue. So a lot of people in my major end up um, taking other classes outside of their interests as well, because you do have that flexibility. Um, currently, I am applying to medical schools this cycle. Um, hopefully, if all goes well, um, I recently just took my MCAT, and then if all goes well, <laughs> I will be submitting my application in the end of May. So I'm an environmental science major, and I think what's really awesome about my major is it's so interdisciplinary. So people do totally different things. Um, I know lots of people go to law school. There are some people that are pre-med. Um, lots of people go into government work. 
Um, lots of people do PhDs, lots of consulting. Um, I'm really interested in wildlife conservation and um, I'll be working at Loggerhead Marine Life Center, which is in Florida, uh, which if you're not brushed up on your Florida geography, that's okay. It's kind of near like Miami-ish area, which is very exciting. Um, so yeah, like that's kind of like what I want to do and then hopefully go to grad school eventually. Um, but yeah, people do totally different things. Um, lots of people do Teach for America or Peace Corps or um, yeah, it could be really anything. It depends on, you know, what you make your path at Berkeley. Okay, we're gonna go into the Q&A questions. Um, and I'm actually gonna start with one that uh, from uh, one of our attendees, Grayson, who was kind to come to uh, this Thursday session after already coming to our Tuesday one and not having their question answered. And so they're asking the same question that didn't get answered then. And so uh, we're gonna make sure we hit it right at the start. Um, so the question is, I've heard all Berkeley students do is study. Is it possible to have a social life that isn't directly tied to schoolwork? And if I wanted to go out with friends on the weekend for a day trip or explore the Bay Area for a weekend, would that even be possible? Okay, I'm gonna tackle this one. I do think there's a lot of studying involved, definitely more studying than I had anticipated. Um, but, you know, I will say that there's a lot of fun that can be had in the libraries of Berkeley. But that being said, no, not all Berkeley students, they don't just study all the time. I mean, I, like that would be insane if that was the truth. We're not just robots, we're actual people. Um, and there are so many different types of things that you can do. I've been to so many different cultural events, like we have dance teams, we have acapella teams, we have stand-up comedy, people do go to those events on campus. I've gone to the Bay, like a bunch of different areas, like you can go to Santa Cruz, you can go to SF. I've, you know, seen what I think is lots of areas in SF, probably not actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it just depends on your time management. And I also think that, um, yeah, I think that there's like this like scary, like idea of Berkeley, like before you come in that like, yeah, people are really competitive and it is competitive, but I think that, you know, there's a way to have fun and then also do well in school, you know, work hard, play hard. Anyone else on this question? Oh, Denise. Yeah, um, I'll just share a little bit. I think um, I think it also depends a lot on like what your goals are. Um, and like, honestly, like it's kind of dependent on your major as well. Cause like if you have um, a harder major, like whether it be, uh, I, th I feel like biological sciences um, have like tougher requirements or if you're like pre-med, um, pre-health or like pre-law or anything, it's also, you have a lot of additional commitments, I would say, because actually um, I think um, before I switched to environmental econ, I was also in nutritional sciences and um, pre-med. And I honestly feel like I had a lot, a lot less time um, with that major just because of, um, you know, just the additional studying I had to do in my classes. Um, but that being said, I still like freshman year and sophomore year when I still, was still a nutritional science major, I still had time on weekends to like um, go out to SF or like, yeah, just explore the Bay Area. And I think if you like um, manage your schedule and time manage good, you'll have time to do those things. And yeah, if you map out your four year um, schedule well, where it's like you're only taking like three classes each semester, you also have more time, free time to like, yeah, have a social life, hang out with friends, um, et cetera. I'll say that one of my favorite non-academic extracurricular activities that I love seeing in the fall semester when I leave the office in the afternoon is that typically on the lawn outside of VLSB, there, it will be a huge crowd of students uh, practicing for Quidditch, the an intramural Quidditch uh, game or sport, or maybe it's actual games taking place there, but they have the hoops set up, you know, and it's, it's all, all different um, 
uh, all different people uh, joining in on this for who enjoyed the Harry Potter books, or maybe some people who never even heard of the Harry Potter books are just like, yeah, let's play this game. So there's definitely some self-care uh, out there happening. I'm gonna throw this question out to you all. How have you cared for yourself over during your studies? What do you do to, um, to take a break from your studies when you need to? I can go first. So to take a break from my studies, I like to go outside, um, especially now during like the pandemic. Um, I have a nice backyard. So I just like to, you know, lay a picnic blanket and then just lay on the ground and just kind of like relax and, you know, think about non-academic things. Um, I also think like friends are definitely keeping me sane during <laughs> this time. So like hanging out with friends, like when this pandemic is over, like getting boba, because, um, you know, we have great boba, um, and then getting food or just like talking to them, like it's really helpful. Yeah, I agree with Tina, but I think for me, a big thing I like to do is like play sports. And um, I'm in Berkeley and some of my friends um, who are here, we like play tennis occasionally. And that's really like stress relieving for me. And um, other than sports, I think I like going on like walks and then just calling friends with that because like while Zoom, it's nice to see people's faces, Zoom burnout is also real. So um, I really enjoy like calling my friends and um, just going on a walk to just like de-stress and relax and catch up with them. Yeah, similar to like Tina, I love laying out in the sun, just putting out a blanket, chilling and just letting go of like not complete not everything in your mind about classes but just taking a break um and also i really value like sharing meals with other people um especially in like a pandemic whether it's like over facetime or zoom um or in person like having a social distance picnic every once in a while has really been beneficial for me so Yeah, just adding on to what everyone said, another, I'm in Berkeley, so another thing that I found out about recently was like gig, so I like didn't know that was such a thing in the Bay, but a lot of my friends, like we just get like a gig car and then you can like rent it for a certain amount of time and then drop it off anywhere in the Bay, so I feel like that's a really convenient way to just get around if you can drive, so we usually like take trips and like just drive to SF or drive locally. Um, I feel like Berkeley is so beautiful. I love hiking too. Like Berkeley has some really, really nice hiking trails. So if you're into that, like it's really beautiful. Um, and then another thing I really like doing is hammocking at the Glade. Um, I feel like also the campus is so beautiful, beautiful, especially when it's sunny. So um, I feel like that's something that's also super fun to do. Um, but whatever it is, I'm sure you guys will have plenty of time to figure out um, fun stuff. And even in like my busiest semesters when I was managing like pre-med stuff and then MCAT stuff, um, I still like I couldn't go at like full speed. So I would definitely take at least like two, three days a week off and I was still fine. Obviously, the mention of boba sent Eileen off to go get boba, I think. Okay, awesome. Um, I'll also throw out there that I've been on the Berkeley campus now for 15 years, and what the thing that kept me sane is a rec sports facility. Um, at, uh, instead of having a gym near my home, I just have it on campus, and it's wonderful to just take a break in the middle of the day. And um, uh, it's a really great social uh, socializing place, too. You run into people, all sorts of people there. So um, shout out for Rec Sports. Um, okay, so diving into more questions here. Rouser is a small college, but are the first two years of coursework in large classrooms? When do the classes get smaller? And also, they just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. <laughs> So I think what's great about RCNR is it can be a combo. Um, I, like the environmental science, uh, social science core and science core that you take um, as a lower division class, those are normally pretty small. Um, you also have the opportunity to take a freshman seminar or decals. 
Um, I took a freshman seminar um, I really liked, and there are lots of them that are offered through ESPM, which is a department in our college. Um, and they're really small classes, like 10 people, and they could be something really specific. So mine was on dinosaurs, so that was really awesome. Um, and then decals could be on pretty much anything from like renewable energy to traditional like indigenous knowledge. Um, so yeah, I would totally recommend taking a decal or a freshman seminar. You can even take a sophomore seminar. Um, but even for the big classes, you'll also have discussion sections, which are normally like 20 people. So you'll get to know the people in your discussion section. Um, and then also your labs um, for like chem and for bio. And I made a lot of really good friends in those labs and discussion classes. Yes, shout out to the freshman seminars. We're hoping to uh, offer uh, one that we've done every year called How to Be a Rouser uh, CNR Scientist. Um, and that's a very small freshman seminar class that just introduces you to the resources on campus. And sort of, uh, for those of you who may not uh, have a strong background in the scientific method, check that class out. It's not on the schedule of classes yet. It'll get posted this summer and um, there'll be information there on how you can sign up for it. Okay, um, next question is, we talked, some of you mentioned that you were uh, on the pre-med track what um, what has your experience been like as a as a pre med student um, on campus? I guess I'll um, start off with this one. Um, it is like very nuanced, but I would say that um, it wasn't what I had heard before coming to Cal because I know um, I had heard a lot of like bad things, I guess, about like how competitive it was and how cutthroat it was and how everyone would like sabotage you and your laptop. <laughs> um, and none of that is true. None of, none of that's happened. I can verify that. Um, but I would say that you will face like some, I guess, harder lower division classes that are in the sciences. Um, some of those being like what you traditionally call like weeder classes on um, like bio, uh, maybe physics, chem, depending on what you're good at. Um, but I would say that it's not, it, it wasn't as bad as what I thought it was. And even in those classes, you have a lot of resources to do well. Um, and you will meet a lot of people who are in the same place as you. And you will, you'll like learn together and you'll study together. And I feel like college is the time where you do grow a lot and you learn a lot about your study habits. So I feel like it is definitely something that as you face challenges, you will also overcome them. Um, so yeah, I would, if I was to do it again, I would definitely still do pre-med here at Cal. So these are my experiences. Also, another thing is like with Rouser CNR, you have so many more resources than people in LNS traditionally have. So I feel like just because of that, you have such a supportive community, you have amazing advisors, amazing staff, like you have peer advisors. So all of those things will also help you succeed. Okay, next question here is, um, what are your top non-academic concerns? i.e. housing, campus safety, tuition, and are they overwhelming? And how do you manage these struggles? Um, I would say that I was concerned about safety. Um, there's definitely um, a larger population of homeless people here in Berkeley than I had experienced in Philadelphia. Um, and I don't know, I, I definitely came in with some preconceived notions. Um, but uh, I think Berkeley takes uh, safety very, very seriously. And um, I have I personally haven't had any issues. Um, so I often use Bear Walk, which is where you can walk with a campus safety officer um, from like wherever it is on campus to somewhere else, like either your off campus um, dorm or apartment. Um, we also have shuttles. Um, 
And then there's also like, um, you get an AC transit card, which is public uh, bus um, that you can take. And so I have never like felt like I needed to walk alone at night, um, even if I was afraid of doing that. Um, another thing that I'll say is tuition, I know is a big concern for people that are out of state or in international students, especially. Um, there are lots of scholarships that you can apply to based on your, uh, you know, the identity group that you belong to or the type of um, academics that you study. Um, but yeah, so I would just like try to apply to as many things um, as soon as possible. And, you know, like you're not alone in having that struggle, like lots of people um, are either on financial aid or on lots of scholarships. And there are there are definitely ways to kind of like alleviate that burden. Um, and maybe the best way to do that is to talk to someone um, that might be in a similar situation. So, yeah, um, those are my two takes. Yeah, to address um, housing. Berkeley is in the Bay Area and Bay, the Bay Area does like have high rent. Um, I'm sure most of us know that, but um, for like in regards to um, like seeking resources, the Basic Needs Center is super helpful. They have like advisors that you can go to if you're ever concerned about addressing any sort of basic need, not just housing, but also food as well. There's like the food pantry, um, any sort of basic needs, they will like have you covered and they can even put you, set you up with like a, um, like an advisor to like a case manager. So um, like if you're having trouble finding like a, um, like a reasonable rent for your own personal budget, they're super helpful in that regard, so. Okay, our next question. Are there regular field trips or field classes at nearby, nearby parks, et cetera? Okay, I'll go. Um, <laughs> I took this really cool course called herpetology. So the study of like reptiles and amphibians um, and it's a field course. Um, so like we would go on these really cool field trips and collect like lizards and frogs and stuff. Um, it was so fun. And then we got to identify um, all different types of animals. So I could pretty much end identify any reptile or amphibian in California, which is really fun. Um, so whenever I'm on a hike, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that type of salamander, that's that type of lizard. Um, and then there are lots of courses like that. Um, really famous one is called IB104. Um, and that is like all of the vertebrates in all of California. There are lots of other cool courses like fish ecology. There's one that's like California ecosystems. Um, there's like grassland and woodland ecology. So if you want to get your hands dirty, like RCNR is the place to do that. And you can find something that like fits your little niche. I know we also have this class called spider biology, which is something I would personally be very afraid to do, but it sounds really cool. Like people like go and collect spiders and then pin them on boards. And so then they have like a little spider collection, which is both creepy and cool. So yeah, if that's what you're into, you can totally do that. I hear that the spider class is actually very popular amongst our students. Um, you would not find me in that class, not for one day. Okay, uh, is anyone, did anyone, uh, is anyone uh, per doing a senior thesis? Aileen, could you talk a little bit about how you prepared to do the senior thesis? Yeah, so there are a few ways that you can do a senior thesis in um, browser. So the way that I did it was through the environmental science major. Um, all environmental science majors do a senior thesis. Um, so starting your spring semester of junior year, you start like planning it, make a proposal. Um, fall, you execute it. And then in the spring, you finish up writing and then do a presentation. Um, so yeah, and like the topics totally vary. Um, how you go about it, um, I think the way that I did it is I had a topic that I wanted to do. So I wanted to do something with reptiles and then something with turtles. And I had an internship over the summer um, at Moat Marine Lab, which is in Sarasota, Florida. 
which again, Florence geography, not super essential. Um, and then, yeah, then I used like the research that I did that summer um, and that data for my senior thesis um, this year. The other way that you can do it is an independent honors thesis. Um, and also environmental science students can also do an honors thesis. It's just like a little bit more structured. Um, so for the honors thesis, um, students, uh, they go to like, a, I don't know, a seminar on it. And then you find a supervisor, either like the PI in your lab or your yeah, lab supervisor or professor that you've had. And you can either suggest something like completely new or maybe take the advice of whatever research your professor is already doing. And then, yeah, it's, you're kind of on your own. And then at the end of spring semester, you, you know, present your findings and yeah, the, the main requirement of an honors thesis is a 3.6 GPA um, for both of those semesters. Um, so yeah, um, and then there's also, you can do um, a student initiated uh, research through SPUR. So it's not technically a thesis, but it is your own independent research. So like whatever way you wanna tackle research, you totally can. Great, thank you. Um, next question uh, comes from Matthew. And Matthew asks, did any of you change your major while at Rouser? How easy is it to try new things and figure out a future direction of study, work, and life, et cetera? Yeah, so I actually switched majors in Rouser. I came in as a nutritional science major, actually, and now I'm environmental econ. Um, so yeah, first year I was taking all like nutritional science classes or like the lower div requirements, so a lot of like chem, math, and whatnot. Um, but actually also one of the lower div requirements vision requirements for one of the tracks for NST was um, Econ 1. So I took that class and I actually really, I took that class at the same time as taking Chem 3A, which is organic chemistry. And I found it a lot more enjoyable than organic chemistry. So I was like, hmm, am I doing the wrong major? And then, so my whole sophomore year, I guess, was like dedicated to like figuring out like what major I wanted to like, like switch to or like stay or stay as nutritional science so I actually took like an environmental science class a public health class um I took data science I took CS I took um I think I took an econ class so I took like a variety of classes my sophomore year and took maybe like only like one nutritional science requirement um because I, so definitely I think it's real pretty easy to try like new things try new classes um I think a lot of the majors um uh are actually designed um, to be doable in three years. So you actually, I feel like you have a whole year to figure out what you really want to do. Um, with the exception of some majors, like the dietetics track for like nutritional science, that's really like specific um, requirements that you need to do in, in each semester of the four years. But I think other than that, like most majors are pretty like flexible and can be completed like within um, like three years. if. Um, you're still trying to figure out what you want to do because yeah um, before like in high school I applied to like different colleges with completely different majors so I was not sure like what I wanted to do I just happened to apply to Berkeley as a nutritional science major but yeah now I'm environmental econ and I love it thank you for sharing that Denise yes your advisors here are, are here to help you figure out where you need to go and sometimes that leads you potentially outside of Rouser College, and that's fine as long as it makes you happy. Um, but we're glad that um, everyone has uh, has found their major here within Rouser. Um, and um, in regards to your, uh, your enjoyment of your experience, this may not be a really enjoyment. Let me, let me just ask the question. Is it really hard to get an A? <laughs> what are the grading curves like in your classes? I guess I could start off. Um, so I would say that a lot of the basic, like the pre-med ones, like bio, bio 1A, like physics, um, math sometimes, um, OCHEM, chem, like all of those classes, I feel like um, it was like a little bit more difficult. And also, so you have courses and then for a lot of the science classes, you also have labs. So sometimes the lab courses are like separate and taught at like a different 
instructor than the normal courses, but you take both of them together. So usually I found personally, like the labs were like normal, normally graded. And then like the other classes um, could be graded sometimes a little harshly. So there's also a website called Berkeley Time that's um, student run and students post like grade distributions. So I found those to be pretty accurate on like how, um, like a good way to gauge like how many A's are given, how many B's are given. Um, and I would say it varies greatly per class. And it's something that you can kind of usually find out before you take a class and sign up to take it. So I'd say that I would say in science classes, it's definitely a little bit harder to get an A um, for sure. But it's what you make of it. And I'm sure if you put in more time and more effort, you definitely can also do that. Okay, our next question is, have any of you studied abroad or are you planning to study abroad? And when is the best time within your four years to do that? Uh, my favorite question. Um, so as most of the panelists know, I'm planning on studying abroad to French Polynesia next fall. Um, really looking forward to it. And then actually, if you're an MEB major, um, it fulfills your area of concentration, uh, one course in your area of concentration, uh, one area B course, and then one upper division lab requirement. So it not only fulfills your courses, but you also get to go and swim with sharks and whales and learn more and conduct your own research. Um, so I'm super excited. And I was told that it's better to go like your second year or your third year. Um, that way you have more experience with like up lower division courses um, and that could help with your field research. And then you can also write about it in your applications to grad school, med school, all that fun stuff. Yeah, um, I studied abroad the fall of my junior year. Um, because as an environmental science major, you have to be on campus spring of your junior year and then all of your senior year. Um, and then, yeah, Josh just put it in the chat, but I did a UC EAP program, which is the UC wide program. Um, and they have so many different classes. We also have like classes that you can fill all different types of major requirements. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll pull up that tool later, but um, Oh yeah, I think Josh got it. But anyway, um, yeah, so you can fill requirements. Um, it can be a GPA boost, you can get cultural immersion. Um, there are also internships that you can do over the summer um, that I know a lot of people have really liked. Um, and then you can do stuff that's totally unrelated to your major. Um, and for lots of people, this is one of the cheapest ways that you can go to another country and learn about people like other than yourself. So it's really awesome. And I would really recommend it to anybody and everybody. As a former study abroad advisor, I'm going to highly encourage that you uh, explore and consider this as an option. Um, there are some amazing programs through the UCEAP program um, and all of the courses you take there earn you UC credit. Um, and I'll also plug in a, a, that last link there about Rouser College and study abroad. Two of our advisors, um, Patricia Hellyer and Megan Davis-Vini, our NST and our MB and GPB advisor, um, they have been working on a project this past year to go through uh, all the UC EAP courses and see how they will meet browser college requirements. Uh, we are almost done with this database. We are the first college to have such a database. Uh, so we really hope that you'll be utilizing this over uh, your time here to determine how you can potentially meet your major requirements uh, while also being in another country and experiencing that. Um, so that's that little plug there. Um, next question, is it easy to navigate into the city or, or into city and regional planning within CNR? Huh. Um, I guess this may be like uh, switching over to potentially to CED. Um, for our, maybe this might be a, a way to approach this question, peer advising leaders, is when a student comes in asking you, you know, how to transfer out of Rouser College or how to maybe get a SIM degree with another college, how, what do you advise them? Uh, 
Um, well, for me, I hold a simultaneous degree. So what was really helpful is um, creating a four-year plan, like listing all the courses you have to take and then trying to fit that in a four-year schedule. And that's really a lifesaver for me. Um, and then if you transfer out of CNR, we would be really sad to see you go. Um, but of course, like go where your heart takes you. Um, and I think it's relatively easy. You'll have to speak with your advisor um, and see what kind of prereqs. If you're a freshman and you want to transfer out, you'll have to wait a semester um, and take. So I would recommend taking like breath courses or common prereqs and see how you like staying in CNR and how you like LNS or CED or another college. Great, thank you. Have any of you not been able to sign up for a class you wanted at Cal? And what did you do? Um, I can speak on that. Uh, this is, um, right now, actually, like this week is enrollment time for Berkeley students, and I wasn't able to enroll in one of the classes that I was hoping to take. It, should, it was like SBUM 108B, um, and it was a really competitive class to get into, not just because um, Cal is big, but because that specific course was um, only given, like, it's only given, like, at, at rare times. Um, it's not like every single fall, it's like every other fall, or it's like an inconsistent um, class. But how I navigated around figuring out whether I wanted to like waitlist or um, like just completely drop the classes going to my advisor because they gave me a lot of insight on like alternatives to that class that can satisfy um, the same requirement that I was hoping to achieve. So um, if there's anything you took away from that, just go, go to your advisor because they're gonna have all the answers you need, so. Next question, who are your favorite professors and what are your most memorable anecdotes of your experiences? Um, I already said one of my favorite courses was herpetology. Um, my professor was Professor uh, Jim McGuire. Um, he studies like flying lizards in Sulawesi, which is a K-shaped island um, in Indonesia. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, and he says lots of crazy things about reptiles all the time. Um, and then another class that I really liked was uh, Sustainable Industry with uh, Dara O'Rourke. Um, and he studied uh, like basically like unethical labor um, in Nike factories in China. Um, and he would say so many things that I was like, wow, I'm gonna remember this for a long time. Like he would be like, you know, like there are so many ways to um, enact change uh, in a corporation or in the world. You just have to figure out which one you think is the most effective. Um, and the fact that there's just like not one answer. Um, so yeah, those are probably two of my favorite classes and professors. Uh, for me, two of my favorite classes, the first one would be Psych 110, which is biological psychology, and it fulfills an area of concentration for the environment and health um, concentration in MEB. And I really liked it because it combined behavioral and bio biological functions. Um, that was something of interest. And oh, I took it with Professor Davina Chan, and I love her. She always includes anecdotes about her experiences. Um, as like a therapist or as, um, you know, as a researcher. And so it was really helpful to remember everything. And my other one is not really a CNR course, but it's Math 55, uh, which is discrete math, which I highly recommend if you're interested in math at all. Um, and I love, and it was with Dr. Sylvie Cortel and Cortiel, and I love her. Um, she's awesome. And my best memory was when we played games together. <laughs> Anyone else? I'm sorry, I lost track of the asterisks of what was the old questions and what was the new questions. So if there's no one else, I will move on to the next one, which is 
Um, do you know of any students who have graduated in three years from Rouser? Uh, does it mean you just uh, have a clear idea of what you like uh, and, or, and mainly take required classes? Um, and then also from the same person, uh, they're asking, would you say Rouser focuses more on research than on industry preparation? So just put that all out there for this person's questions. Okay, so starting off with the first part about um, graduating in three years, um, I actually plan on graduating in four years um, with like my major and my minor. And I thought like that was like, I thought four years would be like the time frame I would finish in, but I ended up getting a lot of my courses in before. And I think if you take like sometimes summer classes, like that also takes off a lot of um, classes that you don't have to take during the year. So I took a lot of my science classes in the summer. So I was able to kind of get everything done and then also explore other things I was interested in. So for me, that was disability studies. Um, so I was able to take courses in that, which I really enjoyed. And it looks like I'm just gonna be done with everything in three and a half years. So. I'm probably going to take the time off after that to like do something fun or travel um and I know a lot of my friends like um have also graduated in three years if that's something that you're interested in um it just involves I guess um having somewhat of a game plan on how you're going to get courses in in time like planning that ahead um I guess there's like lots of different ways people go about it so no no like one path um, yeah, what was the second part of the question again? Would you say that Rouser College is more research focused than industry preparation focused? I would say that depends on who you ask and what they've pursued. I feel like Berkeley in general, I guess it's a little bit more research focused um, just because I know it like a lot of there's a lot of emphasis on research and professors um, do their own research. So that's just something that you're more exposed to. Um, I feel like there are opportunities in industry related roles too, but you just have to go and seek them. Maybe through the virtual bulletin board, um, maybe other people have more insight into that part. Um, I'm gonna also address the like, graduating in three years question like before I switched to environmental econ um I was in <clears throat> nutritional science and actually freshman year after talking with my major advisor I was actually on track in grad for graduating in three years if I stuck with nutritional science but um yeah after switching like I actually was am still able to graduate early even though I switched to environmental econ like the beginning of my junior year but um I decided to like take on a minor instead. So, because I don't really wanna graduate early, but I do know, um, yeah, it's a couple of my friends who were in Rouser who graduated a year early. Um, but I definitely think like, like I was talking about before, a lot of the majors, um, if you only take like, like the required classes, no like minors and not, no other like fun classes, then it's pretty doable to graduate in three years. And yeah, if you know what you wanna do, that's totally an option. But I would also recommend like, yeah, just taking some fun classes because there's some great like professors at Berkeley um, who are really like knowledgeable in their subjects and are very passionate. Um, so I would take like fun classes and yeah, because you only go through undergrad like once. So I personally would not want to like rush it and I would want to like enjoy my time like here. And that way, like if I'm spreading out my classes, I also get more like um, free time to like socialize with friends or whatnot, um, instead of like just packing everything into like three years. Great, thank you. We are at 115 and we had one question left, which I'm just gonna sort of answer as I close out here, which was how often do you meet with your major advisors and when would you suggest meeting with them? I would suggest meeting with them whenever you feel like you need to. Um, we're here for you to, to help you out. Uh, we also have some great online resources for you to be able to track your own degree requirements and things like that. And so we're able to, to make space for students when they uh, need to come in when you know they wanna share something super exciting about what's going on uh, in their academic 
clinics or you know when they're having a rough time and need some uh, some resources. We also have our amazing peer advising leaders that help uh, direct students to where they need to be. Um, and sometimes that involves university health services and that's where Gerard steps in. So there's a lot of support over at the Student Resource Center and we hope that you'll utilize it in the fall semester. Um, that said, I wanna thank our panelists so much for sharing all of their experiences today. Um, it's been amazing and oh, I'm getting, I'm getting some love over the Q&A, even though that's not what it's for, but it's great to see it. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your answers. Um, and with that, we will say we hope to see you in the fall and go Bears. <laughs>